Welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Today we are all going to be learning how to make nasi lemak from a wonderful lady I met recently whilst in Malaysia and she taught me home cooking style how to make nasi lemak. Now this is a great dish. I'll leave a link down to her channel in the description below. Uh, when I made this there were a few audio issues that we had but still I think it's a great video so come along with me now. Let's learn how to make nasi lemak. Now the first part of this is, is, is making the rice and uh, it's getting that nice coconut flavour and just the right balance. Yeah. Right. So I have actually um, uh, rinsed and drained here uh, five cups of uh, you can use ordinary rice, local rice, but here I'm using basmati rice. Basmati, yeah. Okay. And what are the flavours we're going to put into the dish? Okay. Obviously the coconut milk. Okay. Is that the thicker coconut milk? Yes, it is the, the, the first, the cream. The cream, the cream, the head of the coconut milk. Right. And uh, we have here the screw pine leaves, locally called the pandan leaves. To tie it into a knot. Like so, that. so you bruise the surface yeah, of the... To get the aroma. Yeah. Right. Bruised lemongrass. Right. You just bruise it and that just is going to release the, the, the flavours. And then it's actually ginger. It, it gives um, more flavour to our coconut uh, milk rice. Right? So I've actually skinned it and uh, I've actually crushed it as well. But this is the seasoning that I have which is very important for nasi lemak. It must be well seasoned. So I have here salt and a little bit of sugar. Right? Okay. More salt than sugar. First, all right, you just uh, wash and drain your rice well and I'm going to use a rice cooker mm -hmm. so I'm going to put the rice into the rice cooker. Uh, coconut milk, milk has oil so if we were to put all the coconut milk into the rice to cook the oil in the coconut milk may not be able to make the rice cook properly. Okay. So what we are going to do is for this one, uh, this is one coconut milk, the, the cream of one coconut milk, I'm only going to use a quarter of it, okay. which is about maybe 50 grams. Angie's got this all written down on your yeah, I, it, website. It's all in my website. So we're going to leave a link down below the video and you can get across. And actually she's done this video on her channel as well, right. so if you want to see it done really well, you can get across. Yes. This is more Steve's kitchen style. <laughs> okay, <that's laughs> I'm going to dilute it with water. I'm using five cups of rice, so I will use about five and a half cup of water. Okay. Inclusive of the, the, the coconut milk that's added. So adding the sugar and the salt into the, the mixture. Mm -hmm. Stir it well. Pour it into the rice. Top up with additional water. Which this is actually five and a half cup of water. You're adding your the leaves, the school pine leaves, the lemongrass, and the ginger. And how long does that take to cook in the uh, You just, uh, uh, until the rice is cooked. So it's automatic, it's fully automatic. automatic. Right. So Excellent. Cool. Yeah. So our rice now is finished, uh, it's cooked, just keeping warm. Uh, you need to remove all the pandan leaves, the balance of the, the balance of the coconut cream. Into it. Okay. Mix the coconut into the rice so now we leave it until ah. let it continue to cook so that coconut uh, milk or the coconut cream will continue to enhance and absorb yeah. into the rice and i do love this coconut rice it's so nice isn't really complicated i mean in, in, a, in a simple way it's quite easy to make but when you look at it in the process here it looks a little more complicated but this is proper home cooking yeah. the next ingredient that is very important for nasi lemak for me, I believe it's the sambal. So a good nasi lemak sambal should be sweet. Okay. It should be sweet with perhaps some salty and sour undertone. Yes. So that's why we are using this uh, tamarind pulp. The, the tamarind seeds, I've got a, a little picture of the tamarind seeds, you have to rehydrate them in water, so you sort of squeeze uh, them in the water until okay. they release their pulp. And Angie's kind of done all this for yes. me for us before yes. we came. This one can be store-bought, the, the tamarind pot. Yeah. Yeah. So what you do is you just add water and then you use your hands to just work on it and leave it for at least 15 minutes. Yeah. 
Then after that, you just strain it. For the sambal, we need a chili paste. And this chili paste is actually uh, done blending the dried chili. This is the red chili that has been dried. And I believe that if you do not want it too spicy, you, you choose the long variety. Okay. The longer it is, the less spicy it is. First, you soak this in hot water. Okay. Then after that, you de-seed. Then you put in a blender and blend. Here? Here uh, is a mixture of uh, onions and garlic. More onions than garlic. And again, they can uh, blend it up to make this yeah. lovely thick paste. The next one is, this is the big onion. Yeah. Where you actually slice it into pieces. When you add this into the sambal, it gives the sambal a better texture. Mm -hmm. When you eat on it, you have the bites. This is the prawn paste mm -hmm. to give you the, the sambal flavor. This is the palm sugar and this is the ordinary sugar. If you do not have palm sugar, you can actually just use sugar, uh, ordinary white sugar. Okay. Right. The palm sugar gives a, a more sort of rich caramel rich, flavor. Right. Yeah. Yes. It, it definitely tastes better, but without it, it's fine. It, it's also good. And of course, some salt. This is part of uh, the Malaysian uh, traditional nasi lemak where we put anchovies. So what you do is, you, you just uh, peel off uh, the bones and clean it, rinse and dry it and you actually deep fry it to get this. Uh, it's golden brown and it's crispy. Now these are not the anchovies like we have often in Australia which are salted and oiled. These are the little dry anchovies that you can buy here in Malaysia. So because we are adding these anchovies and also the prawn paste, you actually do need to minimize on the salt. You just put about one cup of oil into the wok. Now you have to forgive us, when we're filming, occasionally you forget the odd thing and Angie forgot that we're meant to put this prawn paste in before the onions. So uh, that happens when you're filming sometimes. <laughs> so we'll pop that in there now. You should uh, put the prawn paste first, yeah. you fry until it's uh, aromatic, uh -huh. then you put in the onions. This is the chili paste. For today, I'm not going to add oil because I don't want it to be too spicy. Right, so I'm perhaps just going to add about 100 gram of it, right? Just for, for Steve, <laughs> because I don't think he can take that spicy food, right? And then you need to fry this uh, chili paste into the onions until the oil separates. And you add in the onions, maybe about two cups of it. Two cups? Yeah. Okay. Go so back there. Okay, so we're going to put in our yeah, two sugars. Everything. We've got everything. our palm sugar right. and our regular white sugar. And, and then we're just going to add our salt yeah. in there. Right. And then we will cook this until the, the gravy dries up. I'm just going to give this a, a little taste. And you said you would always try this uh, yeah. before you finalize it, really. Um, yeah, that's good. It does need that little bit of extra salt, but we're going to right. get that from the, from the fish, yeah? So we're going to add in these anchovies right. and the reason we're putting those in late is so that they don't get soggy. We want them to yeah. still have some texture in there. Right. Turn the heat off. That is the sambal made. Doesn't that look absolutely delicious? Now a traditional Nazanamak has some essential ingredients. It always comes with these lovely little crisp anchovies, a little bit of cucumber fresh on the side, some boiled eggs and toasted little peanuts yes. like this. But Angie's recipe is a little special because your husband loves this fried chicken. Yeah, it's, right, it's a Malay style fried chicken. It's uh, crispy on the outside and soft, uh, very moist on the inside. Okay, so Angie's going to show me how to make the uh, special secret ingredients. The most important thing is you make sure that the chicken is cut into large pieces. The reason is because when you deep fry them, the, the meat tends to be moist inside if it is big when you deep fry. For this Malay style fried chicken, the most important thing is the seasoning. The first thing I do is I will season the chicken with salt and a little bit of sugar. Not too much sugar because you're going to deep fry it, otherwise it will burn. So it's more salt than sugar. 
kind of like massage into the, the chicken pieces. Next, you add the uh, the ginger. This this one is a blended ginger, lemongrass, garlic, and onions. Okay. It's all blended. Delicious. Uh, so you just put in. Right? So this is this a is blend, the, isn't it? Yeah, it is a meat curry powder. Okay. Uh, because it's chicken, so you use the meat. You got a couple of tablespoons of that? This one is about two tablespoons. Okay, so pop that in there. We've right. also got some ground coriander. Ground coriander. And we have ground... Uh, 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 this one is a ground uh, fennel. Ground fennel, okay. Cumin. Ground cumin. Turmeric. Here we've got the, the turmeric and the chili powder. The right. turmeric's going to add a lovely colour and a right. subtle flavour. Right. Mix everything in. Make sure that the chicken is infused with all this uh, spice and uh, herbs. Yeah. Freshly ground. The egg acts as a binding agent. Right. For we've got one egg here that yeah, we just uh, whisked up. Right. And we've got how much uh, corn flour? This one is about one and a half tablespoons. One and a half tablespoons of corn flour. The, the corn flour will give the chicken a, a crispy, uh, crisps on the outside. Okay. So be sure that your chicken here must have skin. Yes. Do not remove the skin. Curry leaves. And you could probably use dry curry leaves as well, okay. I guess. Okay. And then you marinate this, preferably overnight. But in good blue pita fashion, here's one that Angie prepared earlier for us. One of the things Angie's saying, she's going to actually infuse the oil with the flavour from the curry leaves. Yes. And what that's going to do also is give us some little crispy curry leaves right. to add to the final dish. They should sizzle away. Oh, beautiful. The mix. Okay, so now we're just going to, I'm going to get a, a drumstick here. So we're just going to take that and just drop it in. It should sizzle away. We're just going to drop it in there and just let go. Nice, yeah. and let it for maybe about 15 minutes. We're going to sit and plate this up now, yes? Yes. Yeah. Right, we have finished putting all the uh, ingredients together. We've made the... We made the nasi Then we made the sambal. And we made this beautiful fried chicken. I don't know if you managed to see that. But that's come out of the fryer now. It is absolutely gorgeous. The whole house smells so delicious. I'm really looking forward to trying this. You just put some sambal on the on here. Then some uh, fried anchovies, roasted or uh, fried peanuts. We okay. just got one or two pieces. Two of pieces. Egg. Two I pieces of egg. Two. We're just going to yeah. pop those on there. The crowning glory, we're going to take one of these beautiful pieces of crispy chicken, a bit on there. And just pop up mm. These are little dried uh, onions. That looks absolutely oh. <laughs> gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> How can I not? I want to thank you for having us in your kitchen today. It's been a real pleasure learning about these spices, learning about these wonderful ingredients that go into a traditional Nazi Lamak. And Steve, I want to thank you for um, choosing Wang Kitchen to come and visit us. Oh, it's my pleasure every time to learn from somebody who really understands home cooking and the traditional re recipes of Malaysia. It's an absolute pleasure. If you've enjoyed this video, get across and check Angie out on YouTube. And I'll also put a link down to her uh, website where she's got all the written recipes. Be good, share the love, and we'll see you yeah. in so. the next recipe. <laughs> Be good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I don't know where to start. Everything on this plate looks so delicious. Where would you suggest? I will start with the rice. With the rice, yeah. yeah. And the sambal. A little bit of this beautiful coconut rice. Can I use my fingers a little? Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some of this crispy curry leave on here as well. I'm going to get a bit of that spicy sweet sand roll. Ready? Beautiful. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh. So good. This is the best 
now in the map I've had since I've been in Malaysia by a long, long way. I don't know if it's because it's home cooking, it's not just a great company, but this is fantastic. Take a look at this crispy MFC Malaysian fried chicken. Fried chicken. Oh, so good. I'm almost speechless. It's moist, it's full of flavor. Look at that. Look at the moisture in there. Yum, yum. As always, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'm going to leave a, a link up here to some other videos that we're doing at the moment on the channel. Also, a link to Angie's YouTube channel. Get across and don't forget to say hi from Steve. Be good. See you next time. Bye.